Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have the same setup as we did in the previous two videos, except now we're trying to find the force needed to cause the block to slide down. What we're trying to do here is remove the wedge, have the block slide down. What is the pending motion downward force required to do so? So any additional force, the block will slide down. What's that limit of that force? And again, what we need to do is we need to take the block and draw the free body diagram on the block. We have the weight of the block pushing downward. Since we're going to be applying a force on the wedge trying to pull it this way, the friction on between the wedge and the block will cause the block to slide into the wall over here and there'll be a reactionary force over here. Now the reactionary force will be the sum of the normal force and the friction force caused by the friction between the wall and the block. The coefficient of static friction is 0.35 and the angle caused by that between the normal and the reaction force will be 19.29 degrees. We also have friction between the block and the wedge. That friction, again, the normal force will be perpendicular to the surface, which is an angle of 8 degrees with the vertical. And then we have a 19.29 degree angle between the normal force and the reaction force. But since it's on the other side of the normal, we have to subtract the 8 degrees from 19.29 and we get an angle of 11.29 degrees relative to the vertical. We then take these three forces and we sum them together. And since there's no motion, there's only pending motion, the sum of those forces must add up to zero. Now what we need to do is find the angles between those forces. When we look at R1, we can see that the angle relative to the vertical is 11.29 degrees, which means that's the same over here. The angle over here relative to the vertical has to be 11.29 degrees. Over here, we can see that the reactionary force R2 makes an angle of 19.29 degrees with the horizontal, which means that that's the angle over here. And to find this angle over here, we need to take 90 degrees and subtract from that the 19.29 degrees, which is 70.71 degrees. And finally, to find the third angle right here, there we take 180 degrees, subtract 11.29 degrees, and subtract 70.71 degrees. When you add these together, that is 82, subtract from that, that means that this would be equal to 98 degrees. That's, let's say 81, yep, exactly 98 degrees. Now that we know the three angles, we can use the law of sines to find the values for R1 and R2. That's not yet what we're looking for. We're looking for F, but we'll do that in part two. Right now, we're going to need to find R1 and R2, which will then be used in the next part, part two, to find the actual force needed to pull the wedge out. To do this, we take the weight of the block divided by the sine of the angle directly across from that, which is this angle right here, 98 degrees. And we set that equal to R1, divided by the sine of the angle directly across, which is this angle. Let's see here, that would be, well, that crosses over, that would be divided by the sine of 70.71 degrees, and we set that equal to R2, reactionary force two, divided by the angle directly across, which is the sine of 11.29 degrees. That allows us to find R1 and R2 in terms of the weight of the block. R1 will be equal to the weight, times the ratio of the sine of 70.71 degree divided by the sine of 98 degrees. And for that, we need a calculator. 70.71, and we take the sine of that and divide by 98, take the sine of that, equals, and that gives us a value of 0 0.953 times the weight of the block. We do the same for R2, the weight times the ratio of, that would be the sine of 11.29 degrees divided by the sine of 98 degrees. All right, so 11.29, take the sine of that and divide by 98, take the sine of that equals, and we get 0 0.198 times the weight, so 19.8% of the weight. So that gives us the values for R1 and R2. Let's write that down over here. 
So we can use those for our next part. So R1 is equal to 0 0.8 times the weight. And those are necessary then for part two, when we start drawing a free body diagram on the wedge itself to find out the force required to pull the wedge out. It'll be again the pending motion downward as we call it. And that's how it's done.